Welcome to Liesl's Artistic Studio. Painting anything with white using watercolors can be a bit of a trick, but it's also really fun to be able to do. So today we are going to paint this lovely blue and white frosty floral spray. I'm really excited with how this turned out and I cannot wait to share it with you. I don't know what we're waiting for. Let's get right into it. So go grab your painting supplies, watercolor paper, watercolor paints, clean water, a paper towel, and some brushes. I'll be using two sizes today, a large and a small. The brand is Grabby Brand, and the exact sizes are a number five and a number two. Then as an optional supply, today I've got some white gouache to use for some little snowflake flurries in the end. Now, as far as the outline goes for this, last week I showed you step-by-step step how to draw this for yourself if you'd like to give that a try. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. However, if you don't enjoy drawing or would rather just jump right into the fun of painting, I do have this outline for sale on my Etsy shop. I will also leave a link for that as well as the links and information on any of the products you see me using today if you're interested. I recommend using a pencil and drawing this outline very lightly, whether you choose to trace it with the template or draw it for yourself. Then once as you've got your outline on your watercolor paper, it might also be a good idea to tape your paper down to a flat surface to help prevent some of the warping. Then we are ready to paint. Let's go ahead now and get a couple of blue colors on our tray to start with. First, I've got some lovely cobalt blue. And then I'll take some ultramarine blue and mix in just a little bit of ivory black to darken it up and make it more of a navy blue color. Now let's begin by painting the background first. So using this large brush, I'll wet down the area around the top part of the flower. And as a side note, I'm not actually painting beyond these small leaves to the left. We're going to leave that area white and uncolored. Then I'll paint the water down the sides of the flowers and I'm just going to paint right over the tops of these leaves. We will paint them darker later. And then I will stop applying the water when I get down to the larger leaves at the very bottom of the page. While all of that area is still wet, I'll add in some of the cobalt blue, painting it along the edge nearest to the flowers and then letting it spread outward. And as a side note, I am painting close to the flowers, but not actually clear up to the pencil lines. The reason for this is because I am really wanting to work quickly to get the colors in here before it starts to dry. Otherwise, the uneven drying time can cause some problems like blooms or cauliflower marks. After I've got the cobalt color down, I'll switch over to my smaller brush and using some of the darkened ultramarine blue, I'm going to come back in while it's still wet and paint right up against the pencil lines of the larger flowers, creating a nice, crisp, and clean line. Then if you feel like your painting could use it, you can add some of this dark blue that extends out more into the space. All right, one background side down and one more to go. So let's copy that same technique over here on the left side. But again, I'm actually going to leave a couple of spaces here on the top and bottom corners that are more white. So I am not going to be painting water or color here. If you're finding this video fun and helpful, make sure you don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more of my enjoyable upcoming tutorials. So while we work on painting this, I have a fun story to share. 
Where I live, we had a pretty big snowstorm a while ago, but the crazy part was that after the snowstorm, the next day we had a huge windstorm. In fact, the snow drifting on the roads and the high winds actually caused the schools in the area to shut down for a day. But then a day or two after the winds started calming down a little bit, my kids decided to go outside and play in the snow and in the drifts. And they started building tunnels and holes that went through the drifts to the other side. It was really fun to watch them be creative and enjoy being outside. Okay, well done. While we let that dry, there is actually one more spot that we need to add some more of this blue background color to, and that's right here in the space between these large flowers. Alright, let's freshen up these blue colors on our tray really quickly before we move on. And actually, I might change things up just a little bit here by darkening up this ultramarine blue and ivory black even more by using not only more pigment so it's more concentrated, but also adding in more black to take it a shade or two darker than what it was a few minutes ago. Then I'll add some ultramarine blue with just a tiny hint of ivory black and this is going to now create two different shades of ultramarine blue. Using the small brush, I'm now going to paint in the small bunches of leaf-like shapes on both sides of the large center flowers. There are two ways you can go about doing this, so take the pick of which way works the best for you. First, you can just paint it a solid blue color, alternating with either the darker or the lighter ultramarine blue, and then you can just call it good. Or if you'd like to take an advanced step and create a little bit of a gradient to these leaves, you can paint the leaf with a lighter ultramarine blue, and then while that paint is still wet, Add in a touch of the darker, almost black ultramarine blue and dab that in at the bottom of the leaf, allowing it to blend upward slightly. This is going to create a nice gradient of light to dark color. Either way you choose to paint this is fine. Just pick the method more to your comfort level. And you'll see that as we paint these this blue color, the leaf-like quality transitions to more of the look of some type of flower rather than a bunch of leaves. So it's kind of neat to watch. So go ahead now and paint all of these sections and shapes in the same way. And I may skip or fast forward this a little bit because they are all the same. But if you're painting with me right now in real time, please feel free to pause the video to finish up this step if you need to. Alright, let's finish off this area surrounding these center flowers by painting in the rest of the leaves or the greenery. So let's get some pure hooker's green on our tray and then let's take some sap green and add in a hint of cadmium red just to give the color a warmer feel. Let's start by painting a handful of these leaves with just the pure hooker's green first. And while that color is still wet, it might also be fun to add some of the ultramarine blue at the base of the leaf closest to the center of the painting to create a darker or more shadowed look.
Now let's paint the remaining larger leaves using the mixed sap green color. I'll paint these leaves using this color first, and then to create the darker shadow look, I'll actually just use an extra amount of the same color. Or you could even try the hooker's green for the shadow instead. I think I'll go ahead and use this same sap green to actually paint these smaller leaves on these last couple of branches as well. Now I'll go back in here and paint any stems between the leaves that I haven't painted yet. Either green is fine for this, the choice is up to you. Alright, we're finally ready to paint the main white flowers of this painting, but before we do, go change out your water for some fresh, clean water. Let's start with the flower centers. So using some of this really dark blue, I'll paint the very middle area of each flower. Then I'll use some gamboge to paint some dots of color that surround that center, finishing off the stamen of the flower. I've gone ahead and cleaned off a small section of my palette and now I'm going to add some pure cobalt blue and I'm actually going to add extra water to this color to keep it really light in value. I'll then wet down a small section on the petal of a flower using water first and then I'll add just a hint of this light and watered down cobalt blue to add just a little bit of color to the petal. The trick here is to make sure you only have a hint of this light blue color. We want to give the appearance of these flowers still looking white when we're done. One way I recommend to help with this is to not paint the initial water on the whole petal. Just put it on half or three-fourths of the petal. The color has a tendency to spread wherever the water is. So if only half of the petal has water, then only half of the petal will have color, leaving the other half a pure white. Then in turn, this helps keep the flower looking white. I also like to just try to add the color where it seems like maybe a shadow area might be. For example, near the edge of the petal where they overlap or might touch another petal, or maybe closer to the center of the flower. So go ahead now and add a touch of color to each one of these petals. All right, while we let that dry, let's come back to our leaves now and add in a center vein line using one of the green colors that's already on our tray.
And now to add the finishing touch to our painting, we're going to paint some dots or splatter marks to represent some little snow flurries. In these two corner spots that I left white, I'll use some dark blue and paint some small circles or dots. Now, if you'd rather, you can load your brush and tap it onto another as we've done in other videos to create some random and quick splatter marks. But today I feel like I wanted to be a little more in control as to where, how many, and the size of them. But you are the artist for your work and you can choose the method that works the best for you. Now that I've got the blue dots in these white corners, let's add in some white dots on the colorful areas. This is of course an optional step, but I think it's kind of fun to add in. So let's pull out that white gouache and add a small amount to our tray. Then add a little bit of water to thin it out. Now I'll use this white gouache to paint on some white snow flurries around the page. You can do as many or as few as you'd like. All right, well done. That's it for today's lovely frosty blue watercolor floral. I hope you enjoyed painting with me today and maybe even learned something new. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.